Hello everyone! In today's video I'll walk you through the process of adding a custom character to the FPS template in Unreal Engine 5.6. Initially I plan to use the high poly FPS arms from our fab project, uh, since they have more detail and are better suited for close-up rendering. But that would be too simple. Instead, uh, this project is a great fit for one of our modular characters. Thanks to micro normal mapping, uh, even up close, hands will look high quality. And the FPS sample from Epic Games is designed in such a way that we see not only the arms, but also the full character body. I'll go ahead and download our modular native character from the Fab Marketplace. Let's start by reparenting the character and see what issues arise. We'll fix them uh, step by step. Uh, we'll set the parent class to the default FPS character. Uh, this way we preserve all the customization logic from the native character while inheriting the core FPS functionality. Next, uh, let's reset the animation blueprint to defaults. This will assign the animation blueprint inherited from the FPS shooter character. I'll also remove all uh, control related logics from the NATA character. Input will be now handled by the parent blueprint. Ok, now let's head over to the uh, shooter game mode, I replace the default FPS character with our uh, custom NATA soldier and see what happens. As you can see in the third person mesh is visible in this scene, but it shouldn't be. It's supposed to be rendered only for other players in a multiplayer game. Also, the character doesn't rotate to match their controller's orientation. Let's address these two issues. We'll go into the character settings and enable use control rotation yaw. I'll also reset the rotation rate to its default value. To hide the TPS components from the FPS view, uh, we could use uh, the own and OC flag in the settings. But if we do that, the TPS mesh won't cast shadows. In this epic sample, uh, the shadow is rendered from the uh, third-person mesh, uh, since its animation is more natural. First-person characters in shooters often use more stylized or exaggerated animations, and this sample is no exception. As you can see, the shadow is currently missing. We don't want to keep the shadow, so instead of using all and all C flake, We'll apply a masked uh, transparent material to hide the third person mesh locally. Let's clear the own and OC flakes and create a custom masked material. It will be unlit and masked. However, masked materials don't cast shadows by default. To fix this, we'll use a special node that forces the material to render only in the shadow path. Without going into too much technical detail, uh, Unreal Engine renders each frame in multiple passes and uh, shadows are handled in a separate path. 
Uh, this node allows us to make a material visible only in the shadow pass or hidden from it, based on the values we feed in. A nail is hidden, one is visible. We could just assign this material to on the third person mesh, but that would hide the mesh from other players in multiplayer as well. And we only want to hide it in our local first person view. So instead we'll implement uh, some custom logic. Let's create a dedicated event that hides the third person components only for the local controller player. Uh, we won't replicate this event so it will only run on the local machine and that way only the controlling player sees the masked material applied. We'll start by gathering all third person uh, components into an array. This will make it easier to apply a replacing logic to all material source. Okay, let's first check if the character is locally controlled. If true, we'll proceed. For each mesh component in the array, we uh, will get its uh, material slots and replace each one with our custom masked material. We will call this event after character customization logic has finished it, uh, executing. Let's see what we got so far. Uh, good news, the character casts a proper shadow, but the headphones were not included in our skeletal mesh array because they are movable static meshes. For them we will apply the masked material separately after the skeletal mesh loop uh, finishes. Now for the big part, um, replacing the default first person uh, mesh component with custom NATO components. This is where modularity becomes extremely useful. We only need to duplicate uh, visible parts for the first person view. Arms, loadout, uh, torso, legs, vest, maybe the backpack uh, since the straps are visible, and the boots.
we won't build a separate customization logic for the uh, first person uh, components that would be too time consuming instead we will copy the meshes and materials directly from the third person components right after the customization logic uh, but before we apply the hidden material locally that way any customization changes will reflect both in uh, third person and first person views let's create a function to synchronize visuals for first person and third person meshes it will take two skeletal mesh components as input a donor third person component and a recipient first person component We'll assign the skeletal mesh asset from the donor to the recipient and as a copy over all materials slot by slot. Recipient. I'm not sure how to spell it. Mm, never mind. Now let us call this function for every first person component using the corresponding third person component uh, as the donor. Now let's synchronize animations for first-person components. We'll go to the construction script in the logic where the third-person animations are synchronized and add a new master pose component tab. The leader will be in the first-person arms mesh component. The targets will be all the other first-person components. I will also remove uh, cast shadows flag from all first person components. Uh, let's test it. Hmm. Something wrong with arms. Let's check what might be causing it. looks like uh, third person arms component wasn't hidden and we are seeing it the inherited component holding third person arms is named uh, mesh so i'll assign the masked material to it and test it again
still not fix it. There seem to be an offset, but I don't see anything in the settings. Look here, I found a flag in the component we inherited from the epic uh, FPS sample, uh, first person primitive type. Our manually added components don't have that flag. I'm guessing this flag tells the engine which force to use for rendering the component. Let's enable this flag for all FPS components. Look here, I found a flag in the component we inherited from the epic uh, FPS sample, uh, first person primitive type. Our manually added components don't have that flag. I'm guessing this flag tells the engine which force to use for rendering the component. Let's enable this flag for all FPS components. Bingo, the arms are finally in the right place. But now there is a problem with the weapon. It's attached to the character's root instead of the hands. FPS skeleton as it uh, has an extra socket specially for weapon attachment. We have two options. Uh, add a socket with the same name to the NATO skeleton asset or reassign the first person skeleton asset from the sample to all uh, NATO mesh components. We'll go with option 2. This approach will work as long as uh, your character is rigged to the UE5 mini skeleton. Fortunately, all our la latest characters are, uh, so no issues here. I'll select all meshes and reassign the skeleton via the property matrix. It takes just a couple of clicks. So, the good news, we can now hold a weapon. The bad news, I can't feel my legs. Yep, there is no boots. Looks like I copied the wrong mesh for the FPS boots. I used FPS boots of the donor instead of the third person boots. Let me fix that. Done. Now everything works as intended. Thanks for watching. If this was helpful, feel free to like and subscribe and see you next time.